Uh, let's try this one more time. There we all go. Right. I think I'll cool. share it. Awesome. Uh, all right. So, yeah, this is my uh, chapter summary. Uh, can you see this okay? Yeah, you're all good. Awesome. So, yeah, the uh, from what I got out of it, the uh, chapter pretty much just starts with, like, the basics behind what numeration is. Uh, it explains that, like, a number is a quantity that explains how much or how many things there are, uh, kind of like whatever, whatever those things may be. Uh, the book gives us this like really childish graph of like eight trees lined up and then says like, oh, these are eight trees. Um, but then it goes into like what a numeral is and how that's different from a number because a numeral is uh, actually the word or letter or symbol that represents a number. Uh, I used X and Y because those are the uh, kind of most common ones that uh, I've used coming uh, from all my previous math classes. But the book goes into a lot of detail on like other numeral systems from different like cultures, which actually leads to my next slide. So the book goes into how ancient cultures kind of did math. Um, I put the ancient Egyptian numeral system, which is basically like hieroglyphics i thought it was interesting like a hundred thousand represents like a tadpole represents uh like a hundred thousand stuff like that um then i put like the roman numeral system which is like roman numerals uh then finally i put the uh chinese numeral system um yeah but the the book gives us more but uh those were kind of the three that stood out to me um so the uh, chapter goes into a little bit of detail into what the uh, place value system is. Um, but first it goes into like what a base is, uh, which is like a whole number larger than one. Uh, it kind of explains that the integer powers of the base give each position, each position, sorry, in a numeral its place value. Uh, then it goes into what digits are, which are just symbols that represent the quantities from zero to one less than the base so like 1.1 or 9.5 something like that uh but then it kind of go uh yeah pretty much just like that uh, and then kind of just bring it home a little bit more i just added that the base determines the number of symbols that are in the system okay um and then it goes into like different numeration systems with different bases which uh, i think the biggest one that they put some emphasis on was the decimal system but they also provided this uh, graph that showed like different ones a uh, binary was one that really stood out to me because it's like that computer thing which like it's only two numbers zero and one um but yeah i i was not aware of the other ones though so that was pretty interesting neither was i yeah yeah uh and then the uh chapter goes into like types of numbers there are starting with real numbers which includes all irrational numbers which are numbers with infinite decimals like the square root of two uh, as well as rational numbers which are numbers represented by the quotient a over b with a and b being integers and uh, b not equaling zero so then it goes into like what natural numbers are which are basically all positive numbers but not including zero uh, but then you get into whole numbers, which, unlike natural numbers, are the positive numbers plus zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to integers themselves, which I feel like I should have put it earlier in the presentation because I think I talked about integers earlier. But um, they're basically all positive and negative numbers uh, plus zero. So I put like a little number line, um, like all the all, all the range of negative numbers and positive numbers. Um, yeah, and then the chapter goes into this really long tangent about the history of zeros and negative numbers in ancient cultures, but I didn't really find it relevant enough for like types of numbers, so I'll yeah. just uh, spare you with all that. <laughs> um, and lastly, the uh, chapter kind of goes into complex and imaginary numbers, which are both based on the square root of negative one. Uh, Imaginary okay. numbers are any number in a square root that's negative uh, and is represented with the letter I. Um, so if it was like, 
9 times the square root of negative 1 it be uh, like 9i. Um, and then it kind of talks about complex numbers, which is when you add a real number, so either um, an irrational or a rational number with an imaginary number. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I got out of it. And uh, I will stop sharing. There we go. Okay, perfect. That was a lot more than I did. So that, yeah, that was something. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, as far as mine goes, I think I... Touch. I, I spoke more just about, I wrote down more what I guess like I took away from it. Cause I, I read the, the chapter and it was like, I wasn't sure exactly what to cover, but um, some of my biggest takeaways, I guess, and this will be, the, I guess the start of the presentation, but um, math is everywhere. That was sort of my biggest takeaway. And you kind of covered that in yours where it's like, it started with like Egyptian hieroglyphics and all of this different stuff that, and if you think about it, like it totally makes sense. Numbers are a form of like reference and just keeping track of things. And even with when whoever came up with the concept of like passing time, all of that is numbers. So it's literally everywhere we look. And I mean, it, probably there's there's real life applications to things like imaginary numbers and the complex numbers and all that kind of good stuff. But for the most part, even like the mo the most simple way of looking at it is just there. There's basic math everywhere you go. So that even com comes down to like patterns and like a sequence of numbers. And like I said, time relies on math and the use of numbers. But if you talk about like patterns and this may be sort of reaching further into it, but um, if you look at like, if you were to cut down a tree, you can tell how old the tree is by the amount of rings that's inside of it. Or if you talk about like Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio, you look at sort of a spiral of things and that basically there's a movie called Pi that I personally that I love um and it, it kind of it covers this mathematician just trying to figure out like the the a whole universe ever existing the complete birth of the universe all coming from pi and the golden ratio so basically like if you graph the golden ratio it's a continuing spiral but how its application is comes into play within nature so if you look at like a, a shell that you find for example it's all a spiral and so everything is either that or it's in like a rule of three which um i know it kind of touched on as well i'd seen somewhere that's the importance of um was it three six and nine so just the um the, the rule of three i guess um and then like we were talking about before i still have uh a lot to figure out about the actual class i guess again like i said i think a lot of it's just finding the real life application, it's basically math ideas. It's basically like a real world application with numbers. Um, so I'm still a little bit, uh, still trying to grasp the full concept of the class, I guess. Um, we talk about the magic square. I know that we that was more in the class than maybe in the textbook, but that was interesting as well, just due to the fact that again, it's like, that even goes back to the number of three because it's in a grid, it's in a grid of nine where it's a three by three square. And each sum of the linear lines through each square has the same sum all across. Uh, so that's like the most basic way of putting it, I suppose, with, with just trying to explain what a magic square is. But um, yeah, I guess that's been my biggest takeaways from the class. And it was kind of short, but um, I mean, well, totally fine. yeah, that was kind of what it was. Again, more of the takeaway was patterns. And, and for me personally, it's like, I think once I, grasp the actual class it'll um it, it'll like make a lot more sense to me obviously but it's also like i don't i like finding patterns and things I, it's a weird i don't know if it's like an ocd thing in my head but i love touching on things like that i like finding sequences and patterns in every single thing whether that be like human interaction or something as like tactile or something that's as like formed as like math where there's a right and a wrong answer there's literally patterns everywhere you look and that goes down to like emotional responses to things and again i mean i, I could get really like philosophical and psychological about it but i think that at the end of the day that's probably going to be my biggest takeaway from the class is just more of a uh, like a real world approach to it i guess and a different way to look at things so yeah i mean that's about it as far as i that's my, that's been my, I guess my biggest takeaways from the class so far. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, for my written thing, I said something similar that I found it really weird that like all these ancient cultures that 
like even as we're a lot more technologically advanced mm -hmm. um they didn't have contact with each other like the egyptians didn't have contact with like the romans mm -hmm. well they did but not for a very long time but yeah. they all came to the same conclusions when it came to math which i think is really interesting and it kind of supports the kind of claim that there are rules just like in physics or in stuff like that and in, in the world and the universe like there's rules to certain things and i think it's really really crazy that like throughout time we've come to those conclusions and figured those out yeah it's it seems to be like the one consistency through the history of like time mm -hmm. it's, it's just like numbers and it's like even with the fact of like we were born with like five decks to like do five fingers on each hand and then five toes on each foot and it's just like it's the craziest thing but it's that's the way that you keep track of things there's no other way that you keep track of certain things i mean you have notes but then again if you're taking notes you're doing dashes and and smaller pieces of it that, that even that includes numbers it's it's kind of crazy it is yeah. interesting. yeah